Hello everyone, you are on the Den Electro channel and, as always, I am Dennis with you. Today I will talk about linear stabilizers of the Kia 78R series. These microcircuits come with different output voltages, but the sample I will show in this video is rated at 9 volts. Its functions are similar to the 7809 stabilizer. Only this one has three legs, and this one has four. The fourth pin is responsible for turning the microcircuit on and off. Up to 35 volts can be supplied to the input of the microcircuit, and the maximum operating current is 1 ampere. She can, of course, hold more, but not for long. The maximum power that it can dissipate on its body is about 15 watts. Also, the microcircuit has protection against overheating, short circuit and overcurrent. A typical microcircuit connection diagram looks like this. The first leg is supplied with a plus input voltage, from 10 to 35 volts. The second leg is the exit. There will be 9 volts here. The third leg is a minus, it is common for both entrance and exit. The fourth leg is the control output. If it hangs in the air and no voltage is applied to it, then the output of the microcircuit will be open and the current will flow to the load. To disable the microcircuit, you need to apply a minus signal to the fourth pin. After this, the output voltage will disappear. Then, in order for the microcircuit to work again, you need to disconnect the minus and connect the plus with a voltage of 2 to 35 volts. But that's what the datasheet says. In practice, it turns out that the plus may not be given after all. And after disconnecting the minus, leave the terminal hanging in the air. If the output of the microcircuit is open, then without load it consumes only about 5 milliamps. This is with an input voltage of 30 volts. If the voltage is lower, then consumption decreases, but only slightly. And if the output is turned off, the current will drop to 2.5 milliamps. As I already said, up to 35 volts can be supplied to the input. But the problem is that this voltage regulator is linear. The microcircuit will dissipate the entire difference between the input and output voltage on its case in the form of heat. Imagine that the current consumed by the load is 1 ampere and this current will be the same for the input and output. The output voltage is 9 volts, and the input voltage is, for example, 20. It turns out that the difference between the input and output voltage is 11 volts. With a current of 1 ampere, it becomes clear that the microcircuit dissipates 11 watts of power. This certainly doesn't sound very scary, but in fact this is already the power of a miniature soldering iron. Therefore, to prevent the microcircuit from burning out, it will need a very large radiator. Of course, it has overheating protection, but you can't rely on it 100%. The maximum power of this microcircuit is only 15 watts. Therefore, with such a current, only 24 volts can be supplied to the input. It turns out that in order to supply the promised 35 volts to the input, the current consumed by the load should be approximately half an ampere. In this case, the chip will dissipate only 13 watts. The efficiency of a linear converter will always be greater if the difference between the input and output voltage is small and the current is small. Now let's do some tests on this chip and see how it works. The left multimeter will show the input voltage, now it is almost 19 volts. And the right multimeter shows the output voltage. The output of the microcircuit is now open since the fourth pin is hanging in the air. But by pressing the small button I will apply a minus signal and the microcircuit will turn off. If the button is released, the voltage is restored. The circuit works in exactly the same way if any load is connected. Now I have connected several lamps soldered in parallel. Their total current consumption is approximately 1 ampere. After pressing the button, 
The load is also easily switched off. The micro circuit works the same, both with and without load. Now let's see to what level we can lower the input voltage so that the output voltage does not change. At the input, I will slowly lower the voltage and monitor what happens at the output. When the input voltage reached about 10 volts, the output voltage dropped by only two hundredths of a volt. A noticeable drop in output voltage begins only when the input voltage drops below 9.3 volts. Below this voltage there will be no stabilization, but the microcircuit continues to work. The difference between the tester readings is now 0.1 volts. But it's not right. My left tester underestimates the readings a little. It should show about 9.2. It turns out that the minimum difference between the input and output voltage is only 0.2 volts. Thanks to such a small voltage drop, the efficiency of the circuit can be significantly increased. To get 9 stabilized volts at the output, it is enough to apply a little less than 10. If the voltage drops even less, for example to 5 volts, then the load can also be turned off using a button. Now I'll show you how short circuit protection works. I have now connected this multimeter to the output and it shows voltage. And this multimeter shows the current consumed by the light bulb. I took a piece of wire and short-circuited the light bulbs with it. And look what happens. The voltage dropped to almost zero, and the current was only 130 milliamps. The microcircuit has entered protection mode. In this state, using the button, the load can also be switched off and the short circuit will disappear. At the input of the microcircuit during a short circuit there will be exactly the same current. If you multiply the current and voltage, it turns out that it now dissipates a little more than 2 watts of heat on itself. In this state, it will not overheat and will not burn anything. That's all for today. Please like the video if you liked it, ask questions in the comments if someone doesn't understand something, and for now everyone.